The collapse of the Mirandi Bridge was a chain reaction that probably started from this, a failed stay cable. In this unique 3D reconstruction, we go back in time to take you to the moment just before the catastrophe unfolded. Hi guys, I'm Andrea Mocha and in this video we show you, but above all help you understand how and why the Morandi Bridge collapsed. And we do it with a never before seen animation produced by the Geopop team. To truly understand the reasons for the collapse, however, it is essential to understand the structure of the bridge. That is, how it was built and how the weights were distributed. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers. We are Italians. It was manually translated into English, but dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. The Polcevera viaduct was 1,102 meters long and divided into two parts. The first one consisted of a deck, the supporting structure of the road surface of a bridge. This was 484 meters long, supported by eight reinforced concrete pylons. The second one was a bridge 618 meters long, where the road surface was supported by three pylons. From top of the pylons, as you can see, were inclined tie rods which were anchored to road surface. These tie rods are called stays, and that's precisely why this type of bridge is called a cable stayed bridge. So the main structure of the bridge is this, look, we've divided it into four separate parts. The outer parts of the road, or rather the deck, were supported by the stays. There were two on each side. The internal parts of the deck, on the other hand, were supported by the legs of the pylons and by reinforced concrete supports in the shape of an H. Here they are. All loads from external and internal components were discharged onto the central pylon and then onto the foundations. We mentioned that there were three pylons. Each stack was separate from the perspective of the loads. It was not a coincidence that only pylon 9 collapsed, while the other two remained standing. A question we've all asked is why did Morandi build such a bridge? It was, in fact, for a practical necessity. Under the bridge there was the city, there were houses, there was a river, there were warehouses, there was the railway. It was necessary to cross the valley with as few pylons as possible. The reason was practical logistics. We have understood how it was held up and now the question is why it collapsed. The pylon that fell was designated as number 9. The most accredited hypothesis to date, also reinforced by the surveillance video of a nearby company, is that of the structural failure of one of the stays of Pylon 9. In fact, in the video from the Genoa prosecutor's office, the start of the collapse is visible. Look, the images are shocking. Now here we are. Let's board our time helicopter to travel back in time to just moments before the collapse occurred. Let's move closer. Oh, okay, that's great. We can see really well. The collapse originated from this point. Humidity and sea salt have penetrated the pores of the cement, causing corrosion to the cables. When a cable corrodes, apart from losing its mechanical qualities, it also expands in size. And it is precisely this increase in volume that has caused fractures in the concrete, weakening the structure. Corrosion has completely consumed the cables until... Crap! The steel cables have slipped inside the cement coating and the stay has broken. At that precise moment, the distribution of weight suddenly and drastically changed. The outermost part of the deck, essentially the road, came down violently, dragging the entire pylon along with it in a forceful descent. These are plausibly the dynamics of what triggered the collapse. In other terms, one of the main supports, the cable, failed due to deterioration and the system, now out of balance, collapsed on itself. At this point someone might ask, but how? One element gives way and everything collapses? Exactly, that's the point, because the structure lacked structural redundancy. And what is structural redundancy? A structure has redundancy if, in the event of a failure of one element, there are others that can support it. If plan A fails, there is a plan B and a plan C. Here, the Morandi Bridge lacked structural redundancy. It lacked a plan B, it lacked a plan C. Today though, modern bridges, including cable-stayed ones, have structural redundancy. In fact, in the majority of cases, they do not have a single stay, but rather multiple stays. If one gives way, 
others support the weight. To understand what happened that day and establish responsibility, experts for the preliminary investigations analyzed portions of the part that collapsed. In particular, they focused on Exhibit 132. From this, investigators have determined that 99% of the cables inside the stays of Pylon 9 were corroded and have stated that, I quote, the steel was in a corrosive state that was of a sustained and generalized nature due to the presence of moisture and the simultaneous presence of aggressive elements such as sulfur-derived sulfides and chlorides. Clearly, investigations are still ongoing and only time will tell with certainty what the causes were. But one thing investigators are fairly certain of is that no maintenance was being done on that bridge and that therefore traffic should have been suspended. Even engineer Morandi, when he inspected the bridge in 1979, observed the cracks on the stays we were discussing earlier. On that occasion, he had said that bridges of this kind were prone to deterioration, precisely because of the environment in which they were located. And he also admitted that at the time of construction, complete information about the durability of materials was not available. In a certain sense, he had already sounded the alarm bell. As a partial solution, in 1992, and not everyone knows this, the stays of Pylon 11 were replaced, while those of Pylons 9 and 10 were not touched at all, remaining the same for another 25 years. More recently, other inspections had also identified a significant state of corrosion in the supporting parts of the bridge, but unfortunately nothing was done about it. In this matter, naturally, we refrain from making considerations for two important reasons. One, because it is not our responsibility. Two, because the process is ongoing. Well, that being said, after the collapse, the rest of the bridge was demolished. It was literally blown up. Just watch. And it was decided that a new one would be built, named the San Giorgio Viaduct, starting from a design by the renowned architect Renzo Piano for the city of Genoa. The new bridge, built in record time, is profoundly different from the old one. It has many pylons, it has 18. Why did they build it with so many pylons today? First we said that only a few were needed, because the conditions have changed. If Morandi chose the Cable State Bridge because of the, the houses and underlying railway, with the new project this problem has been solved. Because the houses and warehouses under the old track have been demolished. They're not there anymore, so we were able to put up 18 pylons. Regrettably, and I must say regrettably, I would like to remind you once again that the most effective tools we possess to combat these tragedies are the prevention and maintenance of our beloved Italy's infrastructure. What I am saying is something that is fairly obvious and apparent, perhaps banal, but we need to reflect on the fact that despite being banal, we haven't been able to learn this lesson. Dear viewers, together with the Geopop team, I want to particularly remember the 43 victims, their families, the numerous injured, and the over 500 displaced people who, in just 10 seconds, lost practically everything they had. We also want to send our very best wishes to the firefighters and all the armed forces who participated in the rescue operations. A very big hug from us. Thank you very much for your watching. We'll see you in the next video, always here on Geopop Science in Everyday Life. Ciao.